in the feed. If you're a podcast subscriber, you heard um, part of our Odyssey NFL Mock Draft special, a teaser for that. Go check that out. That is one of my favorite things every year around the NFL Draft that we do. And we're doing a live show. From the Locked On NFL Draft YouTube page, we're going to go live Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If the draft is on, we will be on to bringing you everything from around our network. We have the best network of local experts to break down these picks, impact, and and outcomes, and everything that these picks bring to these teams, what they mean, and there's no better place to get your draft day content than Locked On NFL Draft's YouTube page and our live show, which I am hosting. Go check it out. You are Locked On Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. So one of the things that I was thinking about with the Packers draft situation is trading. And the reason I was thinking about it was we did our draft tiers yesterday. If you missed that show, go check it out. A lot of a lot of fun stuff to talk about there. But so what what do you do if you're the Packers and you're going, okay, I want to make sure I'm getting my guy. And if you're the Packers, I think you're in a position to say, I want to make sure I get my guy. So they also have to deal with the Eagles are going to be in the market for a receiver. The Chargers apparently in the market for a receiver. Whether or not that has anything to do with Keenan Allen, I don't know for sure, but just something to keep an eye on there. The Saints with now two first round picks. This is, uh, at least from what I've been told and, and the people I've talked to, and our, our boy Ross Jackson over at Locked On Saints insists to me that this trade-up was not about a quarterback, that they want, you know, Trevor Penning, the offensive tackle from you and I, and, and a receiver. You know, Jamison Williams, if they can get him. Saints are going to be in the mix. The Patriots are a potential team to look out for ahead of the Packers at receiver. And the Kansas City Chiefs, who are notorious for wanting to move up and move around and also feel like the Packers do, that they are a receiver away from getting back to where they were a year ago, even after trading the best receiver that they have had in a long time and one of the best receivers in the league in Tyreek Hill. Devontae Adams is the best receiver in the league. Green Bay might have to move up to get where they want to go. So what can they get? A couple things that I want to do with this because I looked at the bet online over unders to see where the betting markets think that these guys are going. And I looked at the Packers draft capital. So, what can they get? If you give up 22 and 53, where can that get you? Their highest first round pick and their highest second round pick. Well, if you use the the Rich Hill draft chart, which is the the one that a lot of teams use. The Jimmy Johnson chart is is become a little bit of um, an anachronism. It's not as widely used. I mean, there's certainly some teams that that still look at it. I think the Rich Hill chart is better. It's not as good as even some of the other charts that are out there. Some teams use proprietary charts. Um, you know, the Rams, the Ravens, the Eagles, um, and potentially the Packers, um, who have a, a robust analytics staff. 22 plus 53 on the Rich Hill chart get you almost exactly to 11. Why is 11 an interesting number with Washington? Well, 11 is interesting, first of all, because Terry McLaurin is there. But second of all, because the bet online over-unders for Garrett Wilson and Drake London, 10 and a half. So if the Jets take one of them, the other one is probably going to be there. If you think Drake London is a special talent and and the Jets draft Garrett Wilson, would you go up to get that guy? Would you go up to get him and say, we think Drake London can be DeAndre Hopkins 
in our t- in our offense. We think he can beat Devontae Adams in our offense. He's 20 years old for crying out loud. He's 6'4". He's, he's 215, 220 and can move. Basketball player, 540 windmill dunks. It just a specimen and, and so much room to go, again, 20 years old. Now, go back to our show yesterday, the tiers. I don't think that there's that much of a difference between Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, and Chris Olave. So I would not go up to 11 to get the player that I think is the best receiver in the class, even though I think Drake London is the best receiver in the class. I think history tells us, and there's been some really great studies done on this, Pro Football Focus have done a couple of them. Don't think you are significantly better at ordering the receivers than the league. The gap between the outcomes for receiver at, say, 14 versus 20, not that different. Wide receiver 2 versus wide receiver 5. Those outcomes are not that different. So don't be overconfident in your ability to order those guys unless you have a situation where you can get not only wide receiver 1, but someone who everyone believes is is this elite prospect. It's I don't think it's worth going up for. What about 22 and 59? Well, 22 and 59 get you to 13. And Houston, Houston will have already picked. This is a second first round pick for them. Why is 13 interesting? This is just total serendipity, by the way. But why is 13 interesting? Well, 13 is interesting because Jamison Williams over under on bet online is 12 and a half. If he falls to 13, you can make that deal and it's a fair trade. And you have a team that only has to fall nine spots. You're giving up the worst of your second round picks. And you still have the extra first and your second. So you still made out well. If you're if you're looking at to net out from the Devontae Adams deal, it would be like Devontae Adams for a first-round pick, essentially, plus Jamison Williams. Devontae Adams for a first-round pick and Jamison Williams, probably a pretty good trade. Probably a pretty good trade. Uh, I, and and so, I don't know. That seems, like a, that seems like a deal that you do. I don't think, though, you're going to be sitting there at 22, and, and at 13, there's going to be this big drop-off. Because again, and this is why we did the tiers first. <laughs> because if you have, let's say, five players in that team, I think, I think it's four, but let's say it's five because Jamison Williams' knee checks out. You don't have to start moving up or even think about moving up until you're running out of tier one guys. This is not like 2020 where you have Devontae Adams and MVS and Al Lazard and all these guys. They don't. You have to get it. I, th- I think you have to get a tier one guy. That has to be your goal is to get a tier one guy. And because you have the extra draft capital, move up if you have to. Let's say they, they want to keep 22, which I think should be the goal. Keep 22. Well, 28 and 53 gets you to 15 with the Eagles. The Eagles could be interested in a receiver. They just traded some of their picks. This is their new high pick. So what if you can't get to 15? 28 plus 59, your second first round pick and your second second round pick. So your original picks if you're the Packers. They get you to 18. Why is 18 interesting? 18 is interesting because the Eagles will have already picked. You're jumping the Saints Second pick, they want to get, I think, a tackle with their first pick. And the Chris Olave bet online over under is 17 and a half. If he gets to, to pass 17, this is probably where you need to get Chris Olave before a team like the Chiefs want to move up. So this is this is something that I think you have to look at. Because at 18, London, Wilson, and Burks could all be off the board. Or London, Wilson, Olave could all be off the board. Or London, Wilson, I think it's going to be definitely those two guys. Jamison Williams could all be off the board. And maybe 
The Packers' first tier is only four guys. Maybe you need to get up to 18. Okay, let's say you don't want to give up any of your day two picks. That would make sense to me. I don't want to give up any of my day two picks. 28 and 92 gets you to 22. Okay, well, the Packers have 22. So it'll probably get you to 23. Let's say when the Packers get to 22, two tier one guys are on the board. Well, two aren't falling for you to 28. So let's say you get to 22 and Olave and Burks are both on the board. You call Arizona and say, we'll give you 28 and 92. And now you can draft both of those guys and you leave the first round with two tier one receivers and you still have two second round picks to go get a tackle or a pass rusher or a safety or any of these other positions that you want to address at the top of the draft. And you left with two tier one wide receivers. Tell me that's not the best case scenario. I really like that one. Here is another one just to keep an eye on. The Steelers at 20. We think they like the quarterbacks. Let's say they get down there and their pick of the quarterbacks are still there. They could get Pickett, Willis, who they really like, Desmond Ritter, Matt Corral, these guys. You want to make sure you jump the Patriots and you want to try and make sure that you are jumping the Cowboys who want to move up for Traylon Burks. They've made no secret that they really like Traylon Burks. You can give up 22 and 140. And on the Rich Hill draft chart, that gets you to 20. If you're the Steelers, you add a pick, you move down two spots, and the Patriots are not taking a quarterback. And you know the Packers are not taking a quarterback. So you're pretty sure unless someone trades into 21 ahead of you, you're going to get a quarterback. That would be the ideal thing to do if there's just one more guy in your first tier. Go up and get that guy. When there's only one left, when that second to last guy gets picked, you got to be on the horn. You got to be on the horn. That's that's my personal opinion. Now, I don't think there's a huge gap between that tier one and th- that next year, Jameson Williams, who, again, I think could be in tier one if the knee checks out, and George Pickens. But I am higher on George Pickens than the league seems to be, than the betting markets seem to be, than plenty of people in the media and and on draft Twitter seem to be. They seem to value him more in the 50s. And so, hey, maybe you leave the maybe you leave the draft. You, you, you can get a safety or a defensive lineman or an edge and a receiver. And then at 53, you still have the chance to draft Pickens or Christian Watson or Jalen Tolbert. That would still be a really good option for you. All of this draft capital gives Green Bay so many opportunities to make the best of it that they're they're in just a terrific position to fill this need however they feel it's necessary. I don't see a trade back unless they've already got one of their guys. There is this, this we, we talked about on the leap yesterday. You don't get your guy at 22, you're there at 28, and all the guys are off the board. Or that's the case at 22. You could trade back. Seattle has two seconds. Uh, The Jets have two seconds. Could you convince one of those guys to come up and get someone? I think if you're the Seahawks, they might want to come up and get a quarterback. That would be an opportunity for you to trade back, but I think more likely they move up and get a guy or potentially two guys. That's not out of the realm of possibility at all. I think... There is a non-zero chance at 22, they take someone and then find a way to move up to get the next guy if there's two guys in that top tier for them that they feel like they can grab. And then the rest of the draft is open to them to attack, frankly, however they want when it comes to other positions of potential need. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Rock Auto. With the increase, when the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Do you know what things these things are supposed to cost? I don't. So why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. So why spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from your chain store or car dealership. RockAuto.com is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are the same 
low prices for do-it-yourselfers or professionals. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Make your second listen Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available on all platforms. All right, we're going to be back tomorrow. Mike Renner from Pro Football Focus joins us. I'm working on another big, 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 big interview. Uh, Hopefully this week, maybe next week. Maybe the week after that. We'll see. Just trying to get it scheduled at some point. Plenty more discussions to be had about the draft, about the prospects, about the roster, and about the future of this team. Always trying to find ways to bring you new, creative, innovative ideas. If you want to hear us talk more about something, I hear from people all the time on Twitter. Um, They send me messages in the Lockdown Packers fan hotline. Hey, I'd love for you to address this question or this issue, or I'd love to talk about this. Send them to me. I always want to be serving the audience as much as I can. Subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, it, it makes a difference, and, and we love seeing you. All of our shows are now on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Wachowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked on Packers fan hotline, you can do that, 920-341-3775 to stay. Locked on Packers. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Athletic Greens. I take Athletic Greens every day. I love being able to bring a product to you that I use in my daily life and and am someone who, just person to person, I've been asked about this product. My friends have asked me about AG1 and I recommended it to them off air because I believe in it. Because I believe in feeding your body things that make you feel better. I believe in the connection between the things that you put in your body and the way your body feels, the way your mind feels. And that's what the Athletic Greens brand is all about. It's what AG1 is all about. When you take AG1, you're getting 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. I love it because... It gets my stomach feeling right every day. Keeps my gut healthy. And I don't mean like I've had too many beers, although some days, certainly, that's the case. I'm trying to get my eating habits to get my body feeling my best, which is why I start my day with AG1. And right now, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NFL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Today's episode also brought to you by your friends at BetOnline. BetOnline is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts.